Welcome to another program in our series, Free Thinking Forum. My name is Bill Weir. Uh, as some of you know, I'm the producer and today the host again. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to have with me today uh, Sanjya Gupta from India. Uh, may I just welcome you to uh, this program. You, you are familiar with Minnesota from being here for some years, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, and you originated in India uh, mm -hmm. uh, and just came to the U U.S. back in 1992 mm -hmm. uh, to go to uh, earn your master's at Iowa State University and as well as your Ph.D. Mm -hmm. at, and in what field was that? Electrical engineering. Yes. And is it not rare that women in, from India earn a degree in electrical engineering? Yeah, it is rare. And you are, so you are kind of a pioneer in a way. <laughs> <laughs> but more, more than in electrical engineering, uh, I, I understand you've been experimenting with ways to shift the focus of education from teaching rote memory to the children learning. Mm -hmm. Would you tell us more about that? Uh, what what you were try accomplishing there? So, uh, so most of my work is in India, and uh, we have uh, most mostly in our school system. Uh, it's a culture of rote memorization. So students generally, uh, whatever I start to them, uh, they memorize the whole thing. Uh, the questions are set, you memorize the answers, and when they ask an exam, you just answer that. Well, that would never work, uh, I think, here in America. We, we have uh, the, the program called STEM uh, for science, engineering, What's the rest of it? Tech, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that uh, apparently is quite quite expensive compared to what you are able to do through your uh, organization, Avishkar, mm -hmm. meaning invention, mm -hmm. in in the science, the Avishkar Center for Science, Arts, and Technology. Mm -hmm. So you you brought a lot of experience from here in America, your your education and experience in working in uh, uh, polar technology and mm -hmm. uh, and now uh, have you studied at the University of Minnesota also? Can yeah, I did. That? Yeah, I did a master's in public affairs uh, from the University of Minnesota Humphrey Institute. Uh, I am an electrical engineer, so in the field of electrical engineering, uh, the sense of service to the community, uh, we engineers are not able to see it directly, if, especially if we work in the field of research. So uh, we are generally in our labs and uh, developing new ideas, new products. But when it comes to, it hits the market and a consumer buys it, they generally see that, oh, this company made a lot of profit. But there is an engineer working behind, providing that surface, service, that is why your cell phones are so, so mm -hmm. advanced. Uh, but I wanted this, the sense of service to be able to see this directly. So I kind of shifted my focus at that time. And first, actually, I wanted to understand what it is all about, so I did the master's in public affairs. And That's a great combination. Yeah, yeah. So, and then when we moved to India, uh, started actually using that. And uh, currently what I do now through Avishkar, that sense of service, I can feel that directly through the eyes of the student. So, uh, with that focus on Avishkar, that is invention, mm -hmm. uh, the Center for Science, Art, and Technology, uh, you, you have uh, tried to help the citizens of tomorrow in India, northern India, mm -hmm. to uh, develop their ability, their curiosity, their creativity, their critical thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that combination. How did you come up with that? Yeah. So uh, it's, 
in where the place where I live in Himachal Pradesh, uh, I would talk more about that. Uh, the schools there are, uh, as I said, the culture, it's a, uh, it's a culture of rote memorization. So uh, curiosity and creativity and criti critical thinking don't so seem to have any space uh, in a classroom setting. So uh, there is a discouragement to ask questions in the class, uh, not to be curious. It's more of a copy and paste culture in classroom. Wow. Uh, if a problem is given, uh, the problems are set, you already know the answer. There is no way to critically analyze a problem and solve it. Uh, and uh, you know, the way our uh, civilization is, in future, your jobs would keep changing continuously. So you need to, able to be able to think on your feet and problem solve. It's, it's not only uh, a need to get jobs, it's actually a life skill. Yes. So, uh, and we have to be able to do it in a classroom setting also. That is why that's education part of is, learning. Uh, that's uh, the part of learning. Uh, and you, you uh, added that Yes. Uh, in place of the rote learning that mm -hmm. had been traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're, let's talk about the mission of uh, Avishkar, Center for Science, Arts, and Te Technology. Uh, uh, it, it does focus on the learner, I understand. Yeah, so uh, what else? Uh, instead, uh, the thing is when a teacher teaches, uh, they seem to think that they have done their job. But if a learner doesn't want to learn, uh, the message of the teacher would never reach the student. So we have so, to know that the uh, student is ready to learn. And what is it that they're interested in learning? Because if you are interested in uh, making a toy car, and if we design our learning around that, then if uh, there is an element of math, there is an element of science, there is an element of physics, chemistry, well, everything hidden right there. So if mm -hmm. we can design our program like that, then a learner would learn more because the learner is interested in making that car. It, so they have to develop it like that. Learning through hands-on experience. Learning through hands-on experience. And the learning has to be joyful. Uh, many, I would say, many families believe uh, that learning is a duty. But I would say at Avashkar, it's a, it's a secret between, the, between us and our students that learning is fun. Uh, and uh, it's very important for us to have a culture of scientific inquiry that uh, logic and reasoning and to be able to ask a question. Uh, if you have a problem to solve, uh, you, uh, if there, you see the problem, you create a, you have a hypothesis that this is how I can solve it. You try it. If you fail, you say this hypothesis was wrong. You make a new hypothesis, you try it again. And that's how you solve a problem. So this is a culture of scientific inquiry. That's so how I would, learned science. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we want. Yes. And it has to be accessible to all. Not only do the people who have uh, finances to be able to do that, but also of, to our untouchable communities, to our low-income families, to all our girls, mm -hmm. and anybody who's outside the school system. And uh, we're, we're le leading into a video that will you can narrate but uh, I, I think you wanted to uh, introduce some of the many things that Abhiskar yeah. uh, does, mm -hmm. it, not just at one center, yeah. but uh, it, doing it at science and math fairs. What's yeah, that? so uh, Avi, we have a campus of Avishkar at in Palampur, in Himachal Pradesh. And uh, so we do our many programs there on campus. And we also go out to nearby schools and any schools in the region that invite us. Our focus is girls, untouchable communities, low-income families, students out of outside the school system, remote communities, uh, homeschool children, homeschoolers, rural yeah. communities. Sometimes you have to walk a few hours to get somewhere because uh, it is not even accessible by vehicles. So. Uh, 
first one focus is popularization of science for our kids to see that science is fun. So we have developed science fairs, mm -hmm. which are basically hands-on science fairs. The first day we go train about 50 kids of middle schools. And then these 50 kids uh, do a science fair where the whole school comes to see it. Even the villagers or the parents, the community members would also come. So all the fairs that we have done, uh, our smallest visitor attendance has been uh, 100 and the biggest fair that we have done is about 500 people attending the fair. So That's great. When, uh, yeah. yeah. So when really a kid uh, yeah, yeah, when a kid ex explains it time and time again and does it himself or herself. So one of the children that are learning uh, is prepared to teach others. Yeah, yeah. Adults exactly. as well as other yeah, children. Yeah. And once the school is bought in and they understand the value of the science fairs and understand so we do the same thing for maths also. Then we would take one topic and would go in deep about that topic, we, our topical workshops, which would be about two hours, which is all mm. hands-on, a lot of hands-off experiments in that. Then we also do many, many camps where kids come and stay on campus at Avishka, and it would be like a one week to a two week camp, where uh, ag again our focus community groups will come there, stay with us, and would deeply engage in science. We also do teachers training, because once we have developed the model and experimented with enough, then we will call teachers, uh, train them on it, so that uh, we are able to reach many more rather than just a few kids. Uh, we also open libraries in many schools. We ask them to give us a room. And then uh, our only request is we will not, we give them shelves and everything, but our only condition is all the shelves would be without a door so that the books are accessible to everyone all the time. That so, is quite, a, yeah. <laughs> quite an arrangement, uh, making the library open all the time to, yeah. uh, so the children can come there and learn. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, you, uh, you also have science clubs, I understand. Yeah, so uh, science clubs is the concept. Uh, what we, tr we are trying to do is, once a school becomes engaged with us, and we have done topical workshops with the students. Uh, not all our students are interested in science. Some of them would be very keen. So uh, we say, OK, form a club there. We will send you models and these uh, ways to build the models. So it would be very simple, very uh, models that can be built with material that is available locally. Or you can find it in your kitchen, or you can find it in your trash and is very inexpensive. So that is our work to develop a, a model that is that inexpensive, and then through the club, the kids can make it themselves. We will tell them how. And perhaps you, we can see that in the video yeah. at, yes. uh, about Avishkar as you narrate it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this video has, a uh, uh, first segment is more about uh, uh, homeschooling community that had come to Avishkar campus. Uh, that we had about 150 people who were on campus and we did many workshops for adults as well as kids. So that is the first part you'll see. So right now we are in Palampur and we would be entering, uh, this is our oh, here's Avishkar campus. Yes. So this is the Avishkar campus. We are in the foothills of Himalayas, so it's very beautiful. Uh, we are at the elevation of about 45, 4,700 feet. And are these the dormitories where those who were? Uh, the, so the room, uh, the hall and right in front was a library and next to it was a science room. So here the kids are doing a reverse engineering uh, exercise where they have taken a, an old uh, electronic equipment but that was not working anymore. They are opening it up and they're trying to see what's inside it. So we try to do this with uh, old, very old equipment to something that was developed a few years ago and current. Uh, here, what you see is a science fair going on. The, uh, it's in a school in Punjab, uh, in a village community. And the kids are actually explaining all the models that uh, they have understood. So we have many concepts there. Uh, uh, learning magnetism. Yeah, too. magnets, uh, sound, electricity, air, water, 
Earth, our solar system. So here a kid is explaining how uh, eye makes two images, two eyes make two images and our brain puts it all together. So if you do this experiment, you will actually see a hole in your hand. Kids get very <laughs> excited with this. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an electromagnet out of a nail. Uh, yeah, and this one is an experiment on sound. Now this is our topical workshop. Uh, my husband Sarit, who is the co-founder of Avishka, he, is, uh, he and I am doing this workshop in a village school. Uh, we are doing science of air. So this is a, what I'm doing is explaining a concept that air does take space. So this kid is actually trying to blow a small piece of uh, paper inside a bottle which already has, which is not empty, it has air inside, right? So, and he won't be able to do that because it has air inside it already. And this uh, particular experiment here, uh, it's thermal expansion of air. So this, this is an, again a bottle, I would put a coin on top and he will hold the water and it will heat up and the coin will pop. Here, here Sarit is explaining the concept of how air travels from high pressure to low pressure. And uh, so you can, uh, uh, you see the blackboard there. Uh, this is what the, this village school has. And so, and here are the girls who just learned the experiments. So it kind of gives you a flavor of yes. different. Well, it's a, a real Vishka. place in uh, yeah. in in uh, Palampur. Pal Palampur. Palampur. Yeah. And uh, so it, it seems, uh, Avishkar, your uh, invention center for science, arts, and technology, is really different from uh, what we see here in the United States. It needs to be different uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you. Uh, what, what are some of the reasons? It's a very integrated approach towards science and math. So when a kid comes to learn science, suppose I'm talking about magnets, it's not only magnets that I'll talk about. I will talk about the history of the magnet, where magnets were found first, and how the properties were discovered by a royal physician of the queen at that time, who used to love to play with magnets. And uh, what was the setting in Europe at that time and what was happening in India at that time? Mm -hmm. And how uh, discovery of magnets actually advanced the technology? How it affects our daily life? Where do we use it in our daily life? What are the properties of magnets? We give kids to play with magnets so that they can find the properties of magnet. Uh, then every model that we build it has to have a feel that the kid would think that, oh, this is very easy, I can build it too. And once we have done that, we have actually put the model at very intimate level with the child. Because we don't want, we don't have the funds, neither do we want to do it that way. That uh, we buy something very expensive because that would, a kid, the kid, our kids are generally from very low income families, so they would be very scared that they'll break something. And here, there is nothing like that. A very low cost model. Very low cost model. And of, with locally available material. And sometimes uh, material rescued from the trash. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, like those, all those mineral water bottles you throw. After developing these projects, I would never throw a bottle. I'll always use it. So I think you've mentioned some of these communities already yeah. uh, that you focus on. Uh, and it, it's rare to have in t untouchables that the lowest class in India to uh, uh, be welcomed into this community? We actually do special programs for them. So when we have kids, uh, our young students from the untouchable community, we do special camps for them, one to two week camps. Mm -hmm. uh, our sister organization called Nari Gunjan. So we get these kids and when we do these programs, we do it exclusively for them. Ah. Because uh, then they, it's all, all of them together and they are not worried about uh, anybody difference else. In caste. Yeah, different in caste. So they don't have to even think about it because it is exclusively for them mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, uh, oftentimes girls uh, are, are helped. Yeah. A, uh, a community of girls. Uh, we very strongly feel about this because uh, if 
we teach, if a man learns, he would go out and earn. But it's the woman who raises the family. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't go very far with education, whatever they have learned, hopefully they have understood the value of education and they will pass it on to their future generation. Mm -hmm. And once a family knows the value of education, we have really got the bang for our buck. So that is very important for us. And, and you reach out to remote and rural areas mm -hmm. uh, over northern India. Northern India, yes. And uh, low-income families, and families who are experimenting with the education system and are homeschooling their kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'd suggest that people go to the website, uh, mm -hmm. or the, the Facebook uh, site, I should say, uh, facebook.com, and that's Abishkar uh, Palampur. Palampur, the, the name of the, the uh, township. Yes. Uh, or or go directly to a website, mm -hmm. uh, abishkarpalampur.org. Yeah, uh, one thing I would like to say here, you know, uh, we uh, put a lot of focus on uh, building. So we run a carpentry workshop. We have a huge carpentry workshop. And I tell all the kids that except for humans, no plant, no animal, no tool, no tree distinguishes between that you are a lower class or upper class, you are a male or a female, you are lower caste or upper caste. They don't distinguish, uh, older age, younger age, they don't distinguish. So when we do our carpentry workshop, we tell our kids all the time, if you know how to use a tool right, the tool will behave and would listen to you. You don't have to be of a particular caste to, our, to learn yeah. to use that tool. Yeah, so uh, our girls, so, so many times in the workshop, a boy will come and would start immediately take a piece of wood and big piece of wood and try to cut, even if they have never used a saw. And our girls would hesitate. But if the girls, if so we always, our first session would be how to use the tool, how to get mm -hmm. familiar with the tool, and then go ahead and try it. Go ahead and try it, yes. yes. So, so that is our main focus. So you, you've developed this, uh, and, and I understand that you even take uh, backpacking trips up into the mountains? Uh, mm -hmm. with some of the students? So our uh, program... This is part of the learning. Mm -hmm. So our program has been uh, uh, very heavily supported by the Rotary organizations here in the area. Uh, in, in, in Minneapolis. Minnesota. In Minnesota area. I am a Bloomington Noon Rotary, my, Rotarian myself. And our District 5950 and Rotary International have supported these projects. So, so through, through their grants is one of the... Uh, last year they supported the project through which we bought tents, sleeping bags, backpacks, and all the gear. And oh. we were able to take these kids up in the mountains. So that's how. And uh, one of the things, you know, uh, our kids are, uh, because this community has a lot of superstition issues. So we lose, uh, our sister organization runs uh, a program where we have 250 girls, Dalit girls, the untouchable community girls in the hostel and we support their education. So what happens with these girls is they would be scared of ghosts in the hostel and they will leave the program. So that means that at the age of 12 or 13, you might get married mm. versus you getting education. So through the culture of scientific inquiry, we try our best to break the myth of ghosts so that the girls stay in the program for long. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, we, <laughs> we certainly need uh, the bright uh, abilities of, of women as well as men mm -hmm. uh, in this big world. And uh, you, you, I understand you, you are visiting schools, large and small, uh, with the, and is that uh, with the class? You're in the classroom teaching, you're, 
you're in effect teaching the teachers at the same time mm -hmm. and helping them establish libraries that are open uh, around the clock. And uh, uh, you, you, you now have, you have a, a daughter as well, I understand, uh, yeah. uh, Shamley, mm -hmm. uh, who is homeschooled. Uh, uh, has she uh, uh, shown an interest in taking part in this uh, as well? Yeah, I have realized that she has become, I don't know how to use woodworking tools that well myself. But she has become a builder. She she builds a lot of stuff, and uh, she's uh, she doesn't go to school anymore. Uh, she actually she never went to school. When we were going uh, at that time, she would go, go with us for a couple of hours when we went, uh, and that's how our program started. And uh, so she's the one who asked us, "How come uh, when you do all this for me?" what would happen to the rest of them? Mm -hmm. So the, if the change has to happen, it has to happen for all. And so, this is so our value, so we decided, okay, we will, what we do for her, we will do it for everyone, and let's see how many are interested. And we have realized that many are interested, they were just not getting it. For our village, our area, this is a kind of an out of the box concept. So. It's kind of difficult for them. The kids love it. Families who get it love it. But many mm -hmm. of them don't even understand what it is. So it will take time, but. Well, thanks to your 12-year-old daughter, uh, she, <laughs> she asked some questions that helped you begin thinking in terms of yeah. uh, Avishkar uh, Center for Science, Arts, and Technology. Yes. And uh, doing the, the many facets of uh, learning that are appropriate to that context mm -hmm. uh, of the culture of Northern India. Uh, we have about two minutes left, and uh, we haven't covered nearly any, uh, there's so much more to be said, but uh, people can see your uh, TED Talks, TEDx Talks that you've given uh, by going to TEDx and uh, what was that word? Dharamsala. Dharamsala, mm -hmm. uh, that you see on the screen there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can uh, learn a lot more from you. Yeah. Well, uh, it's so, such a privilege to meet you and uh, to learn about what you and your husband have co-founded in, uh, there in northern India, mm -hmm. uh, in the township of Palampur. Yeah. And w w uh, in closing, uh, you, what, what do you have to say to the American audience that might be tuned in? Uh, you know, uh, give your kids that free time so that they, they start tinkering with the things that are around the house. Because, you know, there is, there is this imagination that is in their head. They can create and so that we can see what is going on in their head. Uh, children, children are just wonderful. They, they know what they want. We just have to give them that space. And ha there is nothing like doing things with, their, with your own hands and learning. Really, thank you so much for your time and giving me a chance to talk so, to you. Yeah. So important, what, yeah. that message. And, and thanks also to the Rotary Clubs uh, here. Yes for sponsoring your yeah. organization. Yes. And yes. thank you for tuning in uh, to this uh, program in the series, Free yeah. Thinking Forum. Thank you.